Welcome to the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel's Preps Plus Extra, where each week we'll talk about some of the top issues in high school sports, as well as take a look at some of the top games and top individuals you want to watch for the upcoming weekend. Hi, I'm Mark Stewart, Prep Editor of the Journal Sentinel. Joining me this week, as always, is J.R. Radcliffe, Sports Editor of Now Newspapers. How you doing, J.R.? Doing great, Mark. Getting ready for the postseason. We're here, man. Yes, yes. This is high school. Uh, this week is high school basketball's version of uh, Selection Sunday. Uh, Friday and Saturday, or actually Saturday and Sunday rather, we've got uh, the seed meetings, and then at some point on Sunday uh, for boys basketball, the pairings for the uh, the tournament will be released. Um, this year, there will be a little more intrigue with the uh, with the pairings because uh, for the first time. Uh, regional finals will be hosted by the higher seeded team so it's going to take you know those seedings are going to take a little more uh, meaning this year so without further ado uh, there are going to be some interesting brackets in the area uh, let's start in D uh, division two JR what are you keeping your eye out for there well in the new five, div five division format there's uh, definitely a segment in division two that's pretty loaded and probably will be every single year you know, this year you look at one half of, of one of those sectionals, you see both New Berlin schools, Eisenhower and West. you got Milwaukee Pius in there, you've got Whitnall in there, and Wisconsin Lutheran. All five of those schools, uh, traditional, you know, most of, mostly traditional powerhouses, although Whitnall, who's sort of been middle ground team over the past few years, upper middle ground. Right now it looks like they have the top seed locked down, but they have a huge game coming up on Friday against New Berlin Eisenhower, and the winner of that game could end up with a little bit, you know, a little bit more evidence that they deserve uh, the higher seed. Eisenhower's already beaten Whitnall once this year, so uh, although Milwaukee Pius could easily win the top seed as well, coming out of the Classic Eight conference and and being a co-conference front runner right there, you know, another storyline deeper in that in that pool is you've got a team like Pewaukee that's got a better record than say a Wisconsin Lutheran whose, whose non-conference schedule is very difficult and the, really only five teams are going to get a bye in the first round. The sixth team could be Pewaukee, could be Wisco. That, I mean, that's a big battle too because that's one less game you have to play in the postseason. Right, right. And, you know, another interesting aspect of that part of the bracket is it's going gonna, it's gonna to show what value people put on various conferences. You got the Woodland with Whitnell, you got the Classic 8 with Pius, you got Wisconsin Lutheran and the Wisconsin Little 10. So it's going to be one of those, I think it's, we're also going to see where you know, what people think are the stronger leagues because, you know, like I said, my thought was maybe Pius could be the number one uh, seed in that bracket or that portion of the bracket. Um, the top half of the bracket maybe isn't as deep, but there, it's, it's, it's sort of interesting. you got a lot of city schools there, uh, Milwaukee Northwest, Milwaukee Morse Marshall, Milwaukee Washington. Uh, those, those three are probably the top three teams in that part of the bracket. Um, my guess right now is that Morris Marshall is going to end up with the, uh, the top seed in that part of the bracket, but Milwaukee Washington is a team that's coming on pretty strong right now, and you know, I don't want to never say, uh, I don't know if you can call them a sleeper, because Washington is a big name, but uh, they're peaking at the right time, and even though their record isn't the greatest, uh, you know, I think they're going to be a team to look out for in, uh, in the postseason. So yeah, you talk about sleepers, Whitefish Bay, I think last year they were sort of the ultimate sleeper. They're in that, that top segment of that Division II bracket that we're talking about. Whitefish Bay, I think I had them ranked maybe eighth or ninth among the teams that we cover. And then they go in, and, and granted that was just Division II, but then they go in and they, they storm through the postseason. Ron Patton came out of nowhere, uh, had this incredible postseason in Whitefish Bay with, with some dramatic, a dramatic victory in the state tournament they end up winning the state championship in Division Two. So, I mean, they're probably, you know, they're going to they're gonna be one of the top three or four teams in that segment. And who knows, man, in the, in the postseason, as they showed last year, anybody can do it. Why not Whitefish Bay again? Right, right, right. Before we switch to Division One, I, I neglected Tosa East. Tosa East is in that upper half of that uh, bracket as well, so we don't want to uh, neglect the Red Raider fans. But, uh, but now let's switch to uh, Division One, JR. Uh, what's caught your eye there? There's one segment of the Division One bracket where you've got four really good ranked teams in there out of the out of the city conference primarily. Although West Allis Central from the Greater Metro, you know they're they're top in that conference. They're in there as well. But you've got Milwaukee King, Milwaukee Riverside, uh, Milwaukee Vincent, Milwaukee Hamilton is also there in the same sectional. But in the lower half of that bracket, it's going to be difficult to sort of uh, figure out who's going to get the top top couple seeds in in that lineup as well. And you know, any with the city conference schools, a lot of them in that grouping, they've all seen each other once. You can you can get upsets, especially, and, and that's true. A lot of the sectionals where you get a lot of teams from the same conference competing for the second, third time this year. 
Right, right. I, I like, uh, in that part of the bracket, I like King to get the, the number one seed. But you got Brookfield Central, which earlier in the year almost beat King. And, and you got a lot of questions as far as seeding go because the greater Metro, you know, there's some key games coming up this weekend or Friday that maybe, you know, will, will affect uh, the seeding there with West Dallas Central playing a Menominee Falls team, for instance, that beat them pretty well. Yeah, and I, I mean, I don't think anybody should argue Milwaukee King should be the top seed at this point. I think right now it's the question of is that team good enough to, I mean, get through to the state tournament, but also to compete with Germantown right now at 20-0, and easily the top team in the state, really bar none. And, um, you know, does King have the firepower if they should get that far to be able to hang and, and compete with a team like Germantown and maybe knock them off? Right, right. Yeah, it's very. It's going to be a very interesting bracket because Riverside's going to have some kids who are uh, supposedly coming back, uh, who are key uh, key players that would make them uh, a strong team. King has been strong all year. Uh, down the road, obviously, you got Germantown has this played well. Homestead uh, in the, another North Shore team that's really had a, had a great season. So, uh, real quick, Jr. We got uh, state swimming this week, uh, wrestling sectionals. Real quick, give me a couple of individuals you're going to keep an eye out uh, keep an eye out on. Well, in swimming, it's going to be a, a big team battle between Madison Memorial and Arrowhead. Both schools qualify 21 entrants. Madison Memorial's got a few more of the top-seeded kids. Arrowhead's got maybe a little bit of an edge in depth. It's going to, it's going to come right down to that, la that 400 free relay, the final, uh, final event of the day. Could be a really exciting finish. For Arrowhead, Jake Crodall, uh, he's a guy who could win multiple events uh, for, for the Warhawks, and, and every point's going to count all the way down to the, the 16th guy getting, uh, getting points in each event. In wrestling, the, uh, the team sectionals were held on Tuesday night. Arrowhead made it through again. They end up facing a Wisconsin Rapids team that they saw in the state championship last year. Now it's a quarterfinal this year. Rapids is always one of the best, but, you know, there's some rumblings. Maybe this year they're, they're, you know, they're a team that can be beaten, and Arrowhead's certainly going to give it their best shot. On the individual stage, uh, we've got sectionals coming up this weekend. It's uh, a Muskego team, for example, is one that's really paying attention on the individual level. They got three guys: Justin Schirkenbach, Roland Dunlap, and uh, Jordan Grutner, that are top seeded and ranked number one in their respective weight classes. All three of those guys could come away with state titles when it's all said and done. Yeah, I'll throw one name out there for state swimming: Al Nanick from Grafton, junior swimmer who has a chance to win uh, state titles in the the 50 freestyle and 100 breaststroke. Um, would be the, first, the second state champion at that uh, particular school. Uh, so that said, we wrap up another edition of Preps Plus Extra. Uh, if you want to see more Preps Plus, you can watch me and Lance Allen Sunday night on today's TMJ4 at 11 p.m. Till next time, take care. <laughs>